So that's a pretty cool find. I'm kind of pumped about that. Sometimes, the best place to see a particular bird species is in an unorthodox location. Sewage ponds, dumps, and agricultural fields are just a few places that most dedicated birders have visited at one time or another to see a certain species. Today, I'm at one of these quirky spots to look for a relatively common but neat bird to see in Louisiana, the boat-tailed grackle. Today we're looking for grackles in the best place I know where to find them. Target parking lot, and I can already hear them. Uh, they basically just hang out in a lot of the urban areas, so this parking lot seems to be one of the favorite spots. There's also some laughing gulls on the roof. Let's get a, a quick look at those laughing gulls. They're another bird that is traditionally by the beaches, but they've kind of moved into some of these more urban environments. After getting some views of the laughing gulls, I turn my attention to the grackles. So we're looking at a couple grackles up here, being careful not to, you know, get hit by any cars or anything. And one thing that's interesting is it was thought that the boat tail grackles were the only ones that would have a dark eye, and the great tail grackles always had a light eye, but genetic studies have shown that that's not necessarily true. So call is a big thing you can use to tell these guys apart, also range if they do overlap in some places. Boat tails and great tails, they have very like electric sounding calls in my opinion. They remind me of like power lines crackling. The boat-tailed grackle is a noisy species of the southeastern coasts of the United States. They normally feed on small vertebrates and invertebrates, as well as discarded food items in urban areas. Nesting occurs in cattails and other marsh grasses, and these birds are almost always seen in groups together. The species was described in 1819 from a specimen that was actually collected in New Orleans. Males are iridescent purple and black with a long tail and a long, sharp bill. Females are smaller than males, and are varying tones of chocolate brown. Bow-tailed grackles were once lumped with a similar great-tailed grackle, which can be seen further west, although some overlap and range occurs with boat-tailed grackles in the Gulf Coast. Similarities in eye color, head shape, and birds learning the vocalizations of the other species can cause confusion in the identification of boat-tailed and great-tailed grackles in these overlapping areas. Genetic work is currently being done to better understand the differences between these two species. While observing the goofy grackles, I noticed some interesting behavior, as well as some smaller blackbirds that have moved onto the target roof. So you can probably hear all the laughing gull activity. There's a grackle uh, sipping at the water that's coming off the bottom of a car over here, and there's actually some bronze cowbirds on the target roof which was neat. I didn't know you could find these in the Target parking lot as well. Uh, so they're gonna have more of like a um, blue iridescent to them and then the adults will have like a red eye. So that's a pretty cool find. I'm kind of pumped about that, but it's been really goofy to watch the grackles interact with people, see the laughing gulls fly over. Don't even get me started about the birds over at Home Depot. There was like a giant gull flock over there. So a lot happening in these kind of urban areas. The bronze cowbird is a brood parasite meaning they lay their eggs in the nests of other birds. According to the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, over 101 different songbird species have been host to bronze cowbird eggs. The range of the bronze cowbird has expanded north as agriculture has become more prominent, and the first bronze cowbird was found in Louisiana in 1961. Males are shiny black with iridescent blue wings and red eyes. Females are brown with red eyes, while juveniles have dark eyes. Bronze cowbirds feed on plant materials such as grains, as well as small invertebrates such as insects and arachnids. They can often be found in agricultural areas, and are often seen in mixed blackbird flocks. One cool thing about the bronze cowbird is that the males have kind of puffy feathers on the back of their heads, they'll kind of fluff that up and they'll almost give them kind of a Dracula appearance. It's been really neat to watch them on top of that target parking lot, because I had no idea this was a place you could even find them. It's cool to find those species you may not have seen if you didn't stop to look at the more common birds. Now, one thing to notice with the grackles is the males will be black and kind of iridescent, and the females will have more warm brown tones. So we've seen males and females hanging out, and it's just uh, a really interesting sight to see all these birds hanging out in this urban environment. 
During my time observing the grackles, they move from the parking lot trees to the tops of cars, under cars, on the parking lot equipment, and search for anything that could even remotely be considered food, such as what appeared to be the stick from a sucker. After a while, I got a nice surprise when a few of the bronze cowbirds moved from the roof to the nearby trees. Bronze cowbirds actually flew up into this tree over here for a little bit, so that was awesome to see them up close a little better, and got a real nice view of the male with the red eye and the ruffled kind of feathers on the back. So, gonna wrap up our day here at Target, but it was pretty neat to see some of these more common birds that are more underappreciated, and you know, some bronze cowbirds as well. All in all, I enjoyed my time birding this unorthodox location and found that after getting to spend a little more time with these often overlooked birds, that I had a renewed appreciation for them and their quirky looks and behaviors. Where's the weirdest place you've gone birding? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe for more birding content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.